And this idea of, of soil depletion is a very, very important problem. Dr. Wallach's been talking about it for decades, and he's absolutely right on. Soil depletion is a big problem for all minerals, especially zinc. Zinc isn't really very soluble. It's difficult to find in the soil anyway. And with uh, the, the over-farming techniques and topsoil depletion, zinc deficiency is incredibly a significant and incredibly common. If you're an athlete, if you're a bodybuilder, if you're a weightlifter, if you're a weekend warrior, zinc supplementation is really important. Zinc is important if you're dealing with post-surgical issues. If you're post-surgery, zinc can dramatically here uh, accelerate the healing process. Zinc is important for folks who are suffering from osteoporosis, just as important as calcium. If your doctor told you, oh, you had to take a calcium supplement, but he didn't tell you about zinc, for your osteoporosis, well, he's a boneheaded, no pun intended, medical professional because zinc is just as important as calcium for building strong bones. It's hard to think of a more multifunctional mineral than zinc with the possible exception of magnesium and calcium. And this makes zinc deficiencies both good news and bad news. Why? Well, bad news in the sense that zinc's zinc deficiency's ubiquitous nature, the fact that so many people are deficient in zinc, the bad news is, is that zinc deficiency is probably involved in almost every single health challenge you can name. But the good news is, is simply by getting on 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day, you can get a heck of a lot of health benefits. Remember, one of the great gifts of the human body is the more deficient in nutrients we are, the faster we absorb those nutrients. The sicker we are, the faster we turn it around. The more weight we need to lose, the faster we lose the weight. So get yourself on a good zinc, uh, zinc supplement. Zinc picolinate is probably the most cost-effective and the best. That's picolinate, spelled P as in Paul, I as in Igloo, C as in Cat, O as in Oscar, L as in Larry, I as in Igloo, N is in Nancy, A is in Apple, T is in Tom, E is in Edward, picolinate, zinc picolinate 50 milligrams a day. There's also other good forms of it, but that's the best form. Uh, that's probably the best form, uh, at least the most cost-effective form. Uh, it costs you about five bucks for a bottle and 90 capsules. It's ridiculously cheap. Zinc is typically found in high-protein foods, it's, or it's associated with high-protein foods. Remember, zinc is very important for building things. Vegans are going to have a little bit of a difficult time getting enough zinc from food. They're going to pretty much be restricted to uh, eating a lot of beans or whole grains or nuts, which, of course, come with their own, uh, their own set of problems. By far and away, the best dietary sources of zinc are organ meats, liver, or uh, also eggs, dairy has some zinc in it too. Zinc is a building element, so in order to access it, uh, from, uh, in order to, if you want to access zinc, you're going uh, to upregulate or you're going to improve all your building systems, especially muscle building and bone building, also very important for brain health. Zinc's a little difficult to extract out of foods. If you're really going to get, especially out of plant foods, if you're really going to take advantage of zinc, make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes. Make sure you're using apple cider vinegar. Your stomach needs to, producing enough, needs to be producing enough stomach acid to be absorbing zinc. In order to really get the, in order to really exploit or leverage or be able to extract zinc out of foods, your digestive system has to be firing on all cylinders. Digestive acids are especially important. So is pancreatic juices. Bile is important for zinc absorption. The intestines have to be healthy. And you also got to have enough copper, too. If you're taking zinc supplements, you may end up deficient in copper. And likewise, if you're taking copper supplements, you may end up deficient in zinc. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll finish up when we come back from the break and take your phone calls as well. 855-660-4261 is our number. We'll be back after this. All right, our number, 855-660-4261. We'll get your calls here in a minute. We've got... Uh, Got a couple lines open for you if you want to get on board. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 855-660-4261. Uh, let's see. If you're on CNN, uh, if you want to take a look at CNN Health, there's an article, Ebola, drugs are in the works. Surprise, surprise. Quote, scientists racing to develop something that will stop the largest Ebola epidemic in history are trying a variety of experimental drugs on patients. Unquote. Please, guess what, you guys? You're going to now start to see Ebola drugs. You're going to see Ebola vaccines. Uh, it's a lot of money in Ebola, apparently, and drug companies are, are hustling to try and tap into the Ebola market. But we don't need drugs. We don't need vaccines. You don't need vaccines for any, uh, for any uh, uh, so-called viral epidemic, whether it's hepatitis or flu or anything else, shingles. 
What we need to do is boost, uh, make sure we're boosting, strengthening, stabilizing our immune system by eating correctly and making sure we get in correct nutrition, especially the healthy start pack, the mighty 90 essential nutrients. If anybody is using, uh, is interested in getting a vaccine for a draw, for, uh, for Ebola or for the flu before, or hepatitis or anything else, before they get on the healthy start pack, they really need to be doing a little bit of research. We don't need drugs, we need nutrition in addition to mental health and emotional health strategies and spiritual strategies as well. That's what I call the bright side philosophy, the simplicity of health. That's what it's really all about, you guys, the simplicity of health. If we are sick in any fashion, whether it's something as, as dramatic as cancer or as mild as acne or an ingrown toenail, there are strategies that are at our disposal that have nothing to do with the medical model, which needs to restrict itself to emergencies and heroic medicine only, which it does great, which it, which it does fine with. Heroic medicine, that's the role for medicine, to patch us up if we get broken, but not to repair degenerative disease or protect us from, uh, to protect us in any way from uh, from, from things that the immune system is supposed to protect us from, the God-given and divine immune system that we all have at our disposal via birthright. Okay, got so much to say about zinc. I absolutely love this mineral, my all-time favorite. Mineral, mineral zinc deficiencies are very common if you're dealing with any kind of post-surgical issues, immune issues, skin issues, liver health issues. That's another important role for zinc. Zinc is stored in large quantities in the liver. It's a key player, a major player in many detoxification reactions. Sherry Rogers has talked about this extensively, about the importance of zinc for detoxification in her books. If you haven't read Tired or Toxic it's, and you have any kind of immune issue or chemical sensitivity issue, it's a, mu this is, it's a must have book. It's a must read book, Tired or Toxic. It's a little bit technical and it's somewhat hard to find. She does have a few other books. Uh, Detoxify or Die, I think, is one of them. They're a little easier to, uh, easier to read, and uh, they're uh, more readily available. But Tired or Toxic, which came out in the 90s, is an absolute classic when it comes to detoxification strategies and explaining, albeit a little bit technically, how the detox system works. Dr. Rogers talks a lot about using zinc for detoxification, and she's right on, in my humble opinion. So get yourself on 50 milligrams a day of zinc as a supplement. It's ridiculously cheap. Use zinc-containing foods, including high-protein foods, meats, liver, organ meats, especially are good sources of zinc, dairy, eggs, uh, as I said. And then also, if you're a vegetarian, you can use beans or grains or nuts to obtain your zinc, although the zinc that's found in those kinds of foods is a little bit harder to access than zinc that's found in high-protein uh, in meats and uh, dairy and eggs as well. Okay, there's lots more that I want to say about zinc, and then I also want to talk a little bit about zinc deficiency, or zinc depletion of the soils. We'll do that tomorrow on the Bright Side. Time to hit our phones, 855-660-4261 is our number. Let's go to New York and welcome Linda to the Bright Side. What's up, Linda, how you doing? Do we have Linda? Linda, Linda, going once. Hello. Hey, Linda, yes. what's up, how you Hi. doing? Where are you, where are you calling Good. from in New York? Uh, Buffalo region. Buffalo? Uh, yeah, near the Buffalo. Lake Erie is. Oh, Buffalo. nice. Is it winter time there yet? Uh, yeah. You, you got winter time yet in Buffalo, or is it? You, you My time is almost quarter of twelve. No, no, no. I say it's a winter time. Are you got you got some snow yet? Oh, the winter time. Yeah. Well, God willing, we'll have a mild one this year. Okay. That's what I'm praying. For. All right. So no snow um, yet. No snow yet. And sometimes no it gets snow September. Yet. All right. So what's going on? How can we help you, Linda? Um, almost six weeks ago, I had surgery. They found endometrium um, cancer. And okay. Nurse. And uh, and we also found a colon, uh, uh, a tumor in the colon, and that came out fine. They resectioned it, and I'm I was put back together. And now they want to do chemotherapy like this week. Um. I decided I was going to go nutritionally go. to see, you know, give that a, a, you know, to see what I can do with that. Um, did they say they got I'm, all the cancer? They say they got everything out of your body, or did it metastasize at all, or what's the deal? They they said they got all of it except there was one spot that was left on a vein, and they couldn't take it off because the plaque was on the vein, and they couldn't get it off the okay. vascular. Said no. So, do, you know what, do you know what drug they want to give you? 
I'm sorry, Linda, um, you're, you're cutting out. You're cutting out. Say that again. Do you know what the chemo is they want to give you? What is, what's the name of it? What's the drug what it? that they want to give you? Yeah, carboplatin chemotherapy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so you have some questions and, about... You, with, you have, with, you want, with tech. You know, I'm having a hard... Linda, I'm having a very hard time hearing you. Are you on a speakerphone? Because you're cutting out, and I'm only hearing... Yeah, I, I'll go on... Okay, I'm going to... How's that? Linda, okay. Now, Can you hear me better? I, I, much better. Now, say what you were saying now. Uh, tell, okay. They uh, wanted to put me on carbol platen. Okay. And take off. Okay. And um, do it for 18 weeks, three times... Um, I'm sorry, six times every three weeks. Okay. So, so you, anyway... Are you, are you, you want some some nutritional strategies for dealing with your your cancer non 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 platinum and non taxol drugs or non taxol strategies for dealing with uh, dealing with cancer? Yeah, I decided I was going to go with Dr. Wallach's um, nutrients and stuff. Okay. That he's got available. Okay. Um, but my my concern was because I was still like on the fence with the chemo. And I didn't know if I could take both of them at the same time. Uh, heck um, yes. Heck yes. You should take both of them at the same time. Now, I, your doctors, I don't know, sometimes doctors are funny about nutritional supplements, and they have a tendency to take people off all their nutritional supplements. Uh, but no, in my opinion, the nutritional supplements will help the chemo work better, and they'll reduce the toxicity associated with the chemo. I think it's crazy mm -hmm. not to use nutritional. Uh, here's the take. Here's the, the medical take. The nutritional supplements will keep the chemo from working as effectively as it should because chemo kills things, and nutritional supplements make things grow and make things and support things. So, so doctors will say, "Oh, well, you don't want to. We want to kill things here. We don't want you healthy. We want the stuff dead." And this is this really is the problem with chemo. See, when we have cancer, it's not like there's an invader from outer space that came into our body and gave us cancer. Our cancer cells are our cells. Do you understand what I'm saying? Tumor cells, cancer cells, they're our cells. They're not foreign cells. They're your cells. They're your endometrial cells. They're your bone cells. They're your skin cells. They're your lung cells, whatever. They're your colon cells. It's just that they've gone rogue. But you're still killing yourself. It's like having a child. You know, it, it, just like your cells are yours, your child is yours. If your child's bad, do you kill your child? No. You figure out what's wrong with your child, and you nurture and sustain your child, and make your child healthy again. Hang on. I'll finish up when we come back from our break. Don't go away, Linda. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 855-660-4261 is our number. And we'll be back after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we are back on the bright side talking to Linda in Buffalo, New York. Uh, Linda, you there, ma'am? Yes, I am. Okay, so here's the deal. A couple things. First of all, cancer is you. Cancer is us. So when we kill our cancer cells with chemotherapy, we're killing ourselves. If you have a kid and it's a rogue kid going crazy, you know, you nurture the kid, you sustain the kid, you get the kid healthy, and that's how I look at dealing with cancer. But by the time you have cancer, depending on how far it's spread, we're in desperate sorts, and sometimes chemotherapy or surgery, I, you know, it may be something that you need to do. That having been said, there's lots of nutritional strategies that you may want to explore. First of all, before I even yeah, forget, yeah, I got the, I can tell you what I bought. Well, hang on, before you go, before you get into that, okay. let me just tell you. Let me give you a couple things. Uh, there's a, I don't know if you ever heard of a magazine called the Townsend Letter. Uh, it's a wonderful magazine. Uh, it's it's written a little bit for professionals, but there's it's, it's not that difficult to read. And and September's issue of the Townsend Letter, and that's spelled T O W N. S-E-N-D, I believe, Townsend Letter, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's okay. it, maybe A-N-D, E-N-D or A-N-D, Townsend Letter, they have a, a whole, their whole uh, uh, September 2014 issues dedicated to cancer, uh, and there's mm -hmm. lots of good information about alternative therapies for dealing with cancer and nutritional strategies for dealing with cancer. Uh, you, the Townsend Letter, you'll have to get uh, the September issue online, go to townsendletter.com, T-O-W-N-S-E-N-D, Townsend Letter. Dot com, um, and then uh, there's a specially good article on uh, t uh, intravenous vitamin C and cancer. I also have collected a few articles on intravenous vitamin C and cancer. If you're interested, send an email to Ben at ksco.com, and I'll forward these articles to you. Uh, there's a nice article in this magazine, by the way, in the uh, 
I don't know if it was in this issue, but there's an article on copper chelation in cancer, and you may want to look into chelation therapy. That's another thing that you might want to do. And then last, mm -hmm. in addition to IV vitamin C, you may want to consider IV uh, glutathione and IV, uh, IV nutrients in general. Uh, there's a special blend of nutrients called a Myers cocktail, and that's M 